dear viewers, we are together with uh, Gerald Auger, a national native role model, storyteller, and spiritual leader from Woodland Creek in Canada, together to answer some questions. So welcome. Thank you very much for, in, for being part of this uh, interview together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I want to thank and honor Creator first and foremost and yourself, brother, for this interview. And I want to acknowledge all the ones that are listening in that as we talk about this great change that the world is going through right now, that we all come to understand the true power of love, light, unity, and healing. And I speak in my woodland Cree language when I when I speak about the creator and, and spirituality because that's what I was blessed with as an indigenous human being. And I always have to honor that part of my heritage, that part of my culture, and my that part of my spiritual beliefs of who I am. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much to be, to be with us. And it's a pleasure to be able to ask you a, some question and go deeper into your knowledge um, about your native uh, American uh, roots uh, and also spirituality. So let's get into the first question already. Um, All of the ancient scriptures speak of the end of time. Uh, Is there such an information into the native American laws? Um, How are the end of time described in those scriptures? Well, thank you for that. Well, for us, as when I say four directional human being, I'm talking about the Native American of who we are as indigenous here in Canada as well. So just to let you know, when I say four directional human being, I'm talking about who we are as the red people in the human family. So we talk about when we talk about this time we're in right now, this is what has been spoken of in prophecy since the beginning of time for us as four directional human beings. And when our European brothers and sisters would come, they they talked about a time where we would have these men with hairy faces would come from the East. And when they would come from the East, they would bring with them this book that would unfortunately disconnect us from our language, our way of life and our language. And shortly thereafter, the, there would come this box that would shake. And when that box would shake, you'd be able to talk to people many, many miles away. And shortly thereafter, there would be these steel rods that would run on the back of Mother Earth carrying thunder power. And shortly thereafter, the eagle would fly through the air with steel wings. And shortly thereafter, and this is where the time of great change would begin for humanity is when the eagle would land on grandmother moon and after the eagle would land on grandmother moon then there would come grandmother spider would cast a web around mother earth bringing love light unity and knowledge to the world and shortly thereafter a light would fall from the sky that would open up this new world that would be coming And shortly thereafter, there would come, this humanity would see a flash of light in the stars that would shift the consciousness of humanity forever in that time. So when we, when I decipher all of that for those listening in, the men with hairy faces coming from the East carrying the book, would that be what the world knows as the Bible? The box that would shake would be the telephone, the Steel rods running on the back of Mother Earth carrying thunder power would be the power lines. And then the box that would shake, oh, I forgot about a box that would come with an eye in it. And you'd be able to see people in many, many places. That was the television. And when the eagle would fly through the air with steel wings would be the airplane. And when the eagle lands on Grandmother Moon, the time of great change would begin is when the eagle landed on Grandmother Moon, Apollo 11. And what did they say? The eagle has landed. And when Grandmother Moon, would, when Grandmother Spider would cast a web around Mother Earth, is what we call, we have come to know as the World Wide Web. The light that would fall from the 
the sky is the is the is the consciousness that some people know as a Christ consciousness that would be at that time, and when the flash that would happen in the stars that would shift the consciousness of humanity forever in that time is what we know as when the ancestors from the stars would return. So that is how we, for those of us who follow the spiritual road, who follow these, understand these original teachings, who understand these prophecies, we're actually in that time. So it's not so much end times for us. It's a time of great change where Uti Nigan Wiwasi they had said that in the future there is light coming for humanity. But in, before that time comes, there would be this chaos, confusion, mayhem, and destruction that would happen throughout the world. And it was to teach the humanity two things that we have forgotten about our higher power, whomever that may be, Buddha, Allah, God, creator, this man they call Jesus. And how we have become truly pitiful as human beings because we have put away our higher power, put it to the side, and we're operating strictly from an unhealthy ego and thinking that we are in control, that we are the ones in control of creation and have forgotten about a higher power. So these were prophecies uh, that were spoken of by my people. And they talk about the eagle and the condor from the Southern America, where the eagle would unite with the condor. And that would be a time of, that would be a sign that this change is upon us. The Hopis talked about the true white brother and the Pasapa would return, and that would be a day of purification. And when they see the blue star in the night sky, in the heavens, that would be a sign, an indication that time is close. And that blue star that NASA has seen going on a few years now, it is on its way. And we talked about all of that, about Noah is uh, one of our prophets in North America, in, in the U.S., who talked about that there would come a time, mother, and this was in the 70s, she talked about this time, where the there would come a time Mother Earth would become pregnant. And when she gave birth, there would be time of uh, a birth. A great birth would be the awakening that's happening. And before that time, the uh, Mother Earth would shake. And those are the earthquakes. Those are natural disasters we're having in this time. Because what happens when a woman gives birth, she goes into contractions. But before that time, the water would run rampant throughout Mother Earth because of her, her water has broken already. That's why these floods that are happening throughout Mother Earth is her, her water breaking. And now these contractions, like what just happened, unfortunately, in Afghanistan, the 6.1 earthquake, over yeah. a thousand people left this planet, is a part of where Mother Earth is now having the contractions. And when she gives birth, that will be this time of great time, uh, of great change. And that was in, 19, in the 70s that Noah talked about that time. So we've always had these prophecies. We've always had these, uh, this understanding. And uh, so, so the end times for us is the beginning of a new world, a be the beginning of love and light. But it's through this time of chaos, it's showing the world that it's going to fall to its knees to come to understand that they have forgotten their higher power and that we all have to come together under the sacred tree of light in love, light, unity, and healing. So that's how we've always known this prior to our European brothers coming on to Turtle Island that we know as North America. So if I understand correctly, it's a, it's a chain of events of events that is currently unfolding from some years and, mm -hmm. and, and decades and uh, that, that all of those events, one after another, confirmed what has been said in the past. One question that I have, um, if we compare that exact same thing that we have in other religion, um, that we have maybe more in, uh, in, in, in Europe, um, this idea, or, or in other countries, is this idea of a person or the one coming uh, and bringing back the knowledge. So I wanted to know, regarding to what you said, that this knowledge is already there, that you have this knowledge about all of those events. Do Native American people have any information about the coming of the one, if I can say it this way, who will renew or bring this knowledge or another type of knowledge to them? Mm -hmm. 
when we talk about the creator that we know as Native Americans, and we have different on how we honor and know our creator, but we, I've never heard any uh, other, well, the Hopi talk about the, the true white brother, the prophecy of the true white brother, and that when the day of purification would come, that would become this, the Western brother would connect with the four directional brother, and they would bring unity. But the, the true white brother that would be coming would not have a religion, would not have a belief, would, would be based on original teachings that were heard since the beginning of time. And we as Native Americans, we have these original teachings that came, that come from the beginning of time. But I have not, other than the one that the Western world knows as Yahshua, I know as Yahshua that they know as Jesus. Yes. And that the, the return, but for us, it's for me, it was I was sh show, I was shown and taught that when the return is coming, that flash of light, it's not, it's going to reveal a truth that the world has uh, that has been led to believe is as being the truth is not the truth, meaning that Yahshua comes from the stars. And the return of that, and the return of the divine feminine is also. We're in that time as well, right? So, and the only one, and the reason why this awakening is happening, it's to bring humanity back to understanding that there is a higher power, there's something bigger happening in this world than us as human beings. And that, and that's why the creator that we know loved us enough to grant us free will. We are free to make choices but we're not free from the consequences. Exactly. You do good things, good things will come. You do bad things, bad things will come. And uh, then we have forgotten what we know as creator's law, the natural law, laws of nature, and spiritual law. And these were to govern our words and our actions as human beings. Of the four races of humanity, from our yellow brothers and sisters from the Asian, our African brothers and sisters from the Africas and to our white brothers and sisters who come from Europe. And for us as Native American or indigenous who come from Turtle Island, there's the four races of the human family. And uh, that we've all been given a sacred role and responsibility to honor those four sacred elements, the earth, the wind, the water, the fire. And that and now we're in this time where Unfortunately, the children are starting to get affected by the global events. And that because we, the parents have forgotten, the adults have forgotten, the leaders have forgotten the children. And they don't understand that they have overstepped creator's law, natural law, the laws of nature and spiritual law. And it's now coming back on humanity for what we've forgotten. And yeah. it's to teach us to be able to, we need to be there for our children because our children are all known to us, right? So Exactly. And I wanted to emphasize of this point of uh, freedom of choice that you, you mentioned because it's also a freedom of choice uh, right away tells us that there is two possible outcomes because it's regarding to a choice and the choice can be on one way or another. The, the scriptures... Um, uh, also, the ancient scriptures said that there is actually two paths for humanities to follow, two choice to make for humanity to follow using this freedom of, of choice. One path is the continuation of conflict, wars, which leads to the destruction of mankind. Everything that we can see, man-made, those man-made crises that we can see currently. The second path is unification and entering a new level of development. What does Native American lore say about this? And you've been mentioning about it um, with those chain on events. I just wonder, do you also have this idea of the future is not yet determined and it's still on us using the freedom of choice to go one way or another? Do we have that also uh, ideas in the Native American scriptures or, or, or ideas of the future? Mm -hmm. Yes, because I remember asking one of my elders when I had to go six years into the wilderness to unplug from the world. 
I had to come to understand who this man that they called Jesus was, which I've come to know as Yeshua. But at the same time, I asked, well, how did we, I asked this elder, it says, did we have heaven or hell in this prior to European contact? And they said, we did not know heaven or hell that was brought by our European brothers. The only heaven we knew was how if we walked with love, kindness, and compassion in this world and treated our fellow human being with love, kindness, and compassion, then we created heaven for ourselves. And then we earned a good death uh, when our physical walk was done. Then we would go into the light and sit with creator and the ancestors. But then, then the, uh, the only hell we knew was that if you did if you didn't do good things and didn't honor and respect life and all of creation, including your fellow human being, people say that you're then you're making then you're creating hell for you in the future, and that because it's called natural law, it'll come back on you. And where you go from here, beyond the veil or in the spirit world, will determine what your actions and your words were in this world, right? So, so for us, that was, um, that's how we understand the, um, what happens in this world and what we do will determine where we go from here, right? So This idea of, uh, of uh, doing good things, good things will happen and doing bad mm -hmm. things, bad things will happen to us. Um, can you tell us more about, this is an idea of, of a single person doing good things uh, for good things to happen to that person. Can you tell us about more about as a group, as a unity, and mm -hmm. how how the power of unity is? Because it's yeah. very important. That's something yeah. that we, we've seen also yeah. in the scriptures, the idea of, of unity mm -hmm. and being able to go all together, all brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. You mentioned about a different kind. Mm -hmm. It's a very unity motion, and it's not an yeah. individual thing. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us more about that, that idea of unification mm -hmm. uh, from the Native American mm -hmm. uh, view? For us, we are taught as leaders, if you're a chief of the, the tribe or a leader of a collection of, uh, of tribes, as a leader, you are expected to be mindful and respectful of the ones that you lead. Because if you do not lead in a good way and do things that are not good for the people, it's not you as a leader who will pay for it. It's the people that you lead will pay for it your words and your actions if they're not in a good way. Because we also are, we are taught that you can lie to yourself, to your fellow human being. You can't lie to the creator. The creator knows your reaction before your action in life. Just like the creator knows your true intentions behind your intentions because the creator never sleeps. And a part of what we talk about these leaders Unfortunately for us, we had what they call residential schools here on Turtle Island. The U.S. called them boarding schools. And unfortunately, it was these churches that and the religion that demonized our spiritual values, our beliefs, and our ceremonies. And it's good that the Pope from the Catholic Church has apologized to my people for the abuse, the mental, the emotional, the physical, the sexual abuse that happened in these residential schools. But if he truly honors who he is, that he follows that religion and truly honors those words that he's spoken to the world, I will ask him to sit in ceremony when he comes to Canada in July to formally apologize to my people. And if he will sit, in order for him to honor that apology, I ask him to sit in ceremony with my people because when he can do that then he's honoring those words and then he's not then he's showing the world our ceremonies our smudges our medicines are not demonic they're not pagan they're not witchcraft so that's a part of why i always have to be mindful in the people i work with that i know the creator is listening i know the ancestors are watching everything that that i do in this world because i know I understand creator's law. I understand natural law. I understand the laws of nature and I understand spiritual law. So, so I guess for uh, it's for the leaders out there. If you want the people to unite, then I ask you as a leader to walk with love, kindness, and compassion. 
And if we want our children to walk in love, kindness, and compassion, then I ask you as leaders, as adults, as parents, to talk about, in order to talk unification, you have to walk in unification, in love, kindness, and compassion. So, so you actually maybe already answered the, the, the following question. What are the necessary <laughs> conditions for mankind to unite? What are the values we must cultivate in our society and in, in all of the society mm -hmm. uh, because everything is one at the end? This is what I love about the creative society and the eight foundations that it talks about. It mirrors a lot of what we follow that we've been told. We have been, we, we have been told, and I had to sit for seven days and seven nights of no food, no water out on the land to be given these seven sacred laws that were given to, the, to humanity. And these seven laws go deeper. And there's protocols that come with these seven sacred laws that are to govern our words and our actions as human beings. It does not matter what human race you come from. And it, to, to live and abide by these seven sacred laws to the best of your ability as a human being, being love, humility, honesty, courage, respect, wisdom, and truth. That is how we lived prior to human being contact here on Turtle Island. And then fortunately with Now our, the world has forgotten those seven sacred laws and are now honoring and living the seven deadly sins that some religions talk about. Yeah. Sloth, wrath, gluttony, pride, lust, greed, and envy. And that, so that's a part of it for the work that I do for my creator when I get up every day is to be able to bring that knowledge and understanding to my Western brothers and sisters, including my own four directional brothers and sisters, that we have forgotten those seven sacred laws. And in order for us, for the life, for the world to correct itself, we have to still go back to honoring these seven sacred laws and also honoring the most powerful and the most sacred being in this world, that being the woman. Because without the woman, there is no life. We as men are strong physically. But the woman is stronger emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually because she brings life, she gives life. Just like our Mother Earth, who gives us life every day through those four sacred elements, the earth, the wind, the water, the fire. And us as human beings are made of those four sacred elements. The, 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 the wind that runs on the back of Mother Earth is the air that we breathe. The DNA of that tree is the same DNA in our bones. The water that covers Mother Earth is the same water that we are comprised of as human beings. Hence why when the moon is full, the tides are pulled. That's why people get emotional when the moon is full. And the heart is where the spark of life lives as the same spark that comes from Father, Son. So these four sacred elements that we talk about, we are comprised of that. So what we do to the land, we do to ourselves. And that is what one of our foremost leaders, Chief Seattle, had said. Man does not weave the web of life. He is but a strand in it. What he does to the web, he does to himself. And Sitting Bull said, let us put our minds together for our children and what we can do for our children. And that's a part of why this knowledge, the wisdom of my ancestors is now the world is sl slowly starting to understand the true value and sacredness of this knowledge that comes from my ancestors, that comes from the land, that comes from spirits. So the creative society that you mentioned seems to be indeed very aligned with the core value of the Native American and the, the way of, of living uh, because they actually experienced it already and living into this symbiosis altogether without war, without um, any suffering, if I can say, to people. And basically the idea is to go back to this. And that's exactly what the Creative Society is trying mm -hmm. to, to bring back to people, this knowledge, really make sure that we can bring this knowledge. Um, what would be for you and what is the best way for you to bring that knowledge to people to 
awake them, if I can say, um, away from this uh, burden of, of this consumer form of society and to open up to what, what really a, a real human is supposed to be and supposed to behave? Well, I can tell you this, we're doing it right now. By doing this, honoring this, the internet for really what it was created for was to bring that love, light, unity, and knowledge to the world. And the reason why when Olga, creator, bless her soul, when she reached out to me and said, would you would love to be able to talk, how do you share your knowledge to the world through a creative society? And then when I tapped in and I asked my higher power, is this what I am supposed to do? And my higher power said, yes, this is a part of the fulfilling your purpose of why you, when you made that agreement with me as your higher power to bring this love, light, unity, and knowledge to the world so the world can heal. And that's why I am sitting here with you sharing this knowledge because what the creative society is doing is bringing, is honoring and fulfilling a prophecy of bringing that knowledge to the world. And that, so we're already doing it as we speak. So Indeed. It's a matter of acting. We cannot remain silent. We cannot remain inactive regarding to the situation we are right now. We really have to do something. Uh, what would you say to a person that may know about all of this, about the situation in which we are, but not necessarily acting in that sense, not necessarily reaching out to people, not trying to really <coughs> spread that information that there is not much more important than this as of today. What would you say to those people to try to make them act? I would say to those people and that eternity is a long time to get it wrong. Two of creator's absolute laws is no human being has the right to play with another human being's life. And no human being has the right to play with another human being's life. That the creator loved us enough to grant us free will. We are free to make choices, but we're not free from the consequences. And when we talk about honesty, that's when creator said, you can lie to yourself, to your fellow human being. You can't lie to the creator. And that so, and always to be mindful, the creator, whoever your higher power is, is always watching. And there will come a time we all go on our spirit journey back home to our higher power. And it is said there will come a time when that time happens, as you approach spirit world, you will be asked one question. And the one that stands to the, to the right will be the, the gatekeeper that will keep the doorway in the spirit world will be a male entity. The one to the left will be a grandmother, will be a female, and she will be the gatekeeper and she will ask you this one thing. That will determine if you have a safe passage in the spirit world or not, or you'll have to atone for what you didn't do or what, how you didn't know your higher power. And she will ask you this one question that will determine. And the question will be, what did you do to help humanity. So, and that's a part of it. So I would, I would implore those who are still lost, who are still broken, who are still searching to find the healing that they need. Because when you find that healing that you need, you will have completed the, the hardest and most difficult journey you will make in this world. And that's from your mind to your heart. And the reason why they say that's the most hardest and difficult journey you'll ever make Because in order for you to understand those seven sacred laws of love, honesty, humility, courage, respect, wisdom, and truth, the only way you will understand creator's truth, the only way you'll know your own truth is when you're willing to unlearn everything you've been led to believe that doesn't speak to you in your heart. And in order for you to unlearn everything, you have to be willing to unravel through what doesn't speak to you with those eyes that you see the world through. And you have to be willing to unlearn what was spoken to you, what was what you've listened with with these years, and what was spoken to you through the mouth, through the words that were spoken to you. Because that's what sits between your mind and your heart, is your eyes, your ears, and your mouth. And there's a reason why the Creator gave us only one mouth and two ears to listen with. 
That's true. And I really like the idea of responsibility that you mentioned because everything that you've mentioned comes from the person itself. We cannot force a person mm -hmm. to take one path or another. It's up to the person itself or to really go through that process. And it's very important for people to understand. And that's why it's important to spread that information mm -hmm. as much as we can to as many people as we can. So thank you very much. Yeah. And if you have anything that you would like to mm -hmm. add, I would love to, mm -hmm. to, to hear. There is one thing we sat in ceremony. I sat in ceremony with my Western brothers for the solstice that happened a couple of nights ago. And we had to pray. I was told, tell the Western brothers. Uh, we had people who were remote healers, who, were, who worked with energy, who were who worked Reiki, who were intuitive, who were seers, who were empaths. And I was told to gather them, so to pray for the children, because the children are, are, have been forgotten in this time, and they're getting affected by it. So we sat in prayer together and combined our collective spiritual gifts and abilities to pray for the children. And the message was, it was in order to pray for the children, we had to pray for the parents, the adults, and the leaders, because they have forgotten these children. And there is one thing that every race of the human family, male or female, there is one thing that we will do and give our life for in a heartbeat. And that's our children. Because our children are on loan to us from the creator. And we need, as soon as we, we bring life into this world, it's not about us anymore. It is about our children and their children's children. And that's a part of why my four directional ancestors and elders had talked about that time. Crazy Horse said, there will come a time the four races of the human family will gather under the sacred tree of life in love, light, unity, and healing. Because this is for our children. And that, and what we do, or what we do and don't do is going to affect our children. And we don't have the authority to play with our children's lives and to hurt our own children. And that, so that's, I would leave you with that. Thank you very much for those very wise words, very summarizing everything in which we are and make it more clear. You talked about people may, maybe being lost. I think those words really can um, help people, guide people towards the right path. But once again, it's something they have to understand themselves. We are here to save things uh, and, and make sure that they, they, they have an opportunity to, to figure out themselves and to take on the right path. So thank you very much, Gerard, for your time today, uh, for answering those questions. It was very a pleasure to be with you.